In this clip, the crew is carrying out an offshore departure from an oil rig. The weather is a 600-foot cloud ceiling with two miles visibility in moderate rain. An approaching heavy showers prompts the crew to expedite their departure. The co-pilot is the pilot flying in the right seat. As you watch this clip, consider which elements of the automation guidance were well applied and which elements could have been applied more effectively. Climbing initially at 1,000 feet. So, uh, checks are complete. Uh, looks like this weather's really closing in. Uh, I guess we don't want to hang around too much. Yeah, we're all individual with that weather. And lifting. Understood. And 65 torque, hover checks complete. Ready when you are. Departing. Floats are safe. Uh, nose up, nose up. SP, please. Speed selected. Oh, Decouple. That's not holding. That's not holding. Okay. Uh, not okay. And I see you adjusting attitude. It's looking good. Power's good. Airspeed's increasing. We're still climbing. Reselect airspeed, please. Selecting airspeed. As we have just seen, the crew put some undue pressure on themselves, so the takeoff was a little rushed. The pilot flying over-controlled and maintained an accelerative nose-down attitude for longer than normal. The pilot monitoring became focused on monitoring the rapidly increasing airspeed due to the need to disarm the floats before the flight manual limitation of 80 knots. This focus of attention was at the expense of monitoring the other parameters, such as aircraft attitude and heading. Once the floats had been disarmed, the pilot monitoring refocused, noticed the nose down attitude, and called the pilot flying to raise the nose. In response, the pilot flying over controlled and selected an excessively high nose up attitude. The pilot flying realized he was then struggling to handle the aircraft and elected to engage the automation in the hope that it would recover the situation for him. However, the attempt to couple the upper modes was made at a highly inappropriate attitude with the aircraft out of trim. As the autopilot did not have the authority to recover from the decelerative attitude, the coupled modes quickly auto-disengaged. Following some coaching from the pilot monitoring, the pilot flying recovered from the unusual attitude by flying manually. The autopilot was eventually coupled to the upper modes once the aircraft was in a stable, trimmed flight condition. It is essential that you understand your aircraft's autopilot capability as it may not be capable of recovering from an unusual attitude or the resulting recovery may not be as you would expect. Further, it is good practice to ensure the aircraft is in an appropriately trimmed attitude before coupling autopilot upper modes. Discussion points. What checks do you carry out prior to coupling the autopilot on your aircraft? What are the authority limitations of your autopilot? Which elements of the automation guidance were applied well in this scenario? And which elements of the automation guidance could have been performed more effectively in this scenario? 